Today is June 25th. We're finally getting out of Jonathan Dickinson State Park, and we are heading to... Stay tuned. Sometimes the way it sounds might hurt, but it's all good, cause as long as we together and as long as it's clever, I don't care about the weather, let it rain. Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Jason. Uh, Michelle and uh, Jordan are back at the RV right now, um, and I just have a lot to catch y'all up on. A whole, whole lot, and I've got about a four mile drive to the back of Jonathan Dickinson State Park here in Florida where we're staying at. I thought this would be a great time to tell you what has been going on since we have been here in Florida. For over a month and in the same spot, we have not moved. Since we've been down here, I have been volunteering every day. I basically go in in the morning at seven o'clock, I'm sorry, 7.30, and I pick up a lawnmower, a weed eater, a blower, a gas can and I just go to the park and mow whatever needs to be mowed you know and, and there's nobody really managing me saying oh go here today and do this do that sometimes there is but really you know I got experience in this so I know what needs to be mowed obviously I'm not gonna mow something that doesn't need to be mowed so today is June 25th and we are finally getting out of Jonathan Dickinson State Park and we are heading to the Florida Keys I can't wait to get out of here but it's so bittersweet. Good thing I'm paying attention right now off to the road because there's a little turtle going across the road. Would you like to see him? That's truly life down here in Florida. Lizards or geckos, whatever you want to call them, tortoises, um, <laughs> big ants, uh, snakes, alligators. I, I don't know, everything you can think of I've seen here bunnies too so right now i'm heading up to this building here i'm heading up to this building back here and i'm going to turn in all my hours that i've done and i'm going to say goodbye to everyone because i'm done so i just got back in the truck i had to turn in my hours went well they said thanks for we appreciate you mowing and uh, doing the grass here they said i did an excellent job and that i am one of the best people they've had here as far as mowing and, and weed eating that's not a joke i've been told that several times that's all I've ever done since I was 20 years old is I've just mowed. I've had, you know, random jobs here and there, but that's, this is what I know how to do. And when I came out here, you know, I thought I'd even forgot it. I hadn't, you know, done much in so many, so long that when I came out here, I thought, man, am I even going to know how to use a zero turn mower? But no, I didn't have any problem with it. Shoot, I was, I pulled out of the barn area where we get your equipment at. I was using one hand doing the thing. You know, I don't even use two hands. I'm just that good at it. It's too hot. I can't do it anymore. I, that's one of the reasons I'm, I'm leaving. You know, you could stay here for, I think, um, up to eight weeks, I think. But I've been here a month and a half, and I'm, I'm done. And it's gotten pretty scarce where we're at in volunteering section because nobody wants to be here during this time of the year. It's June. It's freaking hot. I'm telling you, you know, it's 90, 93 degrees right now with humidity, and it's brutal. You're sweating so bad, and you're burnt to a crisp. And you can't see it you just it's just uh, it's just not comfortable you're probably thinking well now i have my he has his boat here well what's he gonna do with his boat i'm double towing that thing that's exactly what i'm doing i'd rather take my chances of getting pulled over and getting a ticket or even getting a warning or worst case scenario i gotta drop it and pick it up later because i'm in florida this is the fishing capital of the world i think i don't even know but i would say it is i'm i'm just not gonna travel around without my boat i don't care if, if you can't double tow here, so what? You can't speed, you're not supposed to have bad registration, you know, all that stuff. Did y'all want to know something? I didn't even know this. When my boat got here, the registration expired in February. I didn't even know it was expired because it's been sitting in storage. I had no clue. So I'm literally going to be driving down the road with expired registration on the, on the trailer. <laughs> and I'm double towing. I did a video last year that was about towing doubles. And... I got some likes, but I also got some criticisms from it because the way it was titled was I'm double towing, which I was double towing, but there was also some jibber jabber in there about us where we were going. Really, it was just showing, hey, I'm towing doubles, but I'm also going here and there and there and there. And the people that were clicking on the video just wanted to see about towing doubles because apparently this is not something that everybody does and I have figured that out now. Not everybody tows doubles. It's very rare. I never see people towing doubles to be honest with you. It's very, very rare. So in this video, I'm gonna be a little more in depth about towing doubles. So when you double tow, you basically have your truck, your fifth wheel, 
and then you have whatever's on the you pull it on the back of your fifth wheel truck car suv whatever you want to call it whatever you've got back there some people call it triple towing which is not really the term that i would use because you're not actually triple towing you know this is your primary vehicle then you're towing whatever's on the back but it is called triple towing a lot of times in the rv community now i know some of you are going to be like well uh you can't be double towing it's dangerous and you got to be able to stop in time it's all about your stopping power and all that okay yes that's true you know you got to be careful it's all about keeping your distance you know if you're coming up to a light be prepared to stop you know you i don't go through a light if the speed limit's 45 miles an hour i'm not coming through an intersection at 45 miles an hour i'm coming through that intersection at 40 miles an hour don't have my foot on the gas i'm waiting for that light to turn yellow and i have to determine every second is it going to turn yellow or red and you have to know your vehicle just know your equipment if you don't learn it if you're going to be out driving slam on the brakes and stop I mean, I know I, I know what I can stop and what distance I can stop in, you know? I just know. I'm not trying to get into the whole issue of braking power and pulling in and all that. What I'm trying to show you is what I do personally when I double tow. So what you're fixing to see now is how we do it. How, we, how I hook it up, how I back up to it, how I connect it, check all the lights, which yes, one light's going to be out because it went out when we put it in the water the other day, which I'm fine with that. You're just going to get to see exactly how we do everything. So, if you remember, I had the basket on the back back here. It looks different now, don't it? There's no basket. I had the basket back here, and I had the kayak here, and I had the um, generator here. The kayak did not work out, I'm going to be honest with you. Every time I stopped, I was so worried it was going to fall off, and it looked like it was going to fall off every single time. It seemed to put more weight on this than I ever thought it or intended it to do, even though it was sitting on the basket. The basket is so unstable on the road it's not made very supportive so literally the generator had to be right in the middle or it would be all lopsided it was terrible i actually hated it at the same time i wasn't driving around with a big old kayak on top of the truck that was embarrassing but now i'm pulling a boat so how more embarrassed could i get because look at my boat oh my gosh look at this thing it's destroyed i mean i've destroyed this boat it didn't even look like this when i got it Yes, it was bad when I got it, but it wasn't this bad. Let me take you through a few things that we're going to do here before I get on the road. And this is what I do. First things, first things first, obviously. I get the boat ready to go. And look at this. Look at this real quick. Look at my sonar. Look at this. Look how much the sonar is hanging down, the fish finder. I have to completely rip this off and redo it and put some JB Weld in it this time. What's happened is when we were fishing, the fish were coming around and ripping around this thing and pulling it off and... If you ever back up, this comes ripping off. I gotta fix all that. So to get ready to get the boat towable, what I do is I just walk around and I check everything before I even hook it up. I basically look at my tires. Okay, tires look aired up, they look all right to me. They're not anything bad. If they look a little low, then I will check the air tire pressure in them and, and go that route, but they look all good to me. Make sure my boat motor's up. I keep the plug out of the boat. That way, if any water gets in it or it rains or anything like that, the water's gonna just fall out the back, no problems put my ladder up, make sure there's nothing in here that's gonna come flying out on the road. Because if it is, I'm not gonna know it. Because I cannot see this boat in the mirror. I can see to the left and right side of the boat, I know the boat's back there, or if it's swaying or anything, but I can't see if any of this is blowing out. So I basically make sure that all this is strapped down tight and it's not going anywhere. Next step is to get everything put up where it needs to go. So I've got bicycles out here, these bicycles need to go on the back of the RV back here on the ladder. That's where we put them out. Put them on the ladder. Um, they don't weigh too much. And <laughs> as much as I've had on that ladder, bicycles are nothing. I'm gonna strap them down really well um, back here and we'll go from there. <laughs> well, here's how it ended up going on here. This is not how I wanted it to go on here, honestly, but I'm, it's so hot outside. I have no stool to stand on because everything's packed away. So <laughs> I was trying to like bungee cord it up like kind of like cook something onto it so it would pull it up and then I would strap it all down but it wasn't really working that way so I just said screw it I just put a bunch of ropes on it and tied it down it ain't going anywhere that's for sure I mean it's tied down for her bike I decided you know what I got plenty of room in the boat I'll throw it in the boat it'll be fine in the boat and it's a heck of a lot easier so while Michelle's finishing up doing the RV inside and pulling the slides in I'm gonna hook up the boat and I'm gonna move the boat right over there right in there so that when we pull out the RV I'm gonna back right up to it so we're gonna do that now.
I got to air up the airbag, so I'm <clears throat> going to get my trusty air compressor from Harbor Freight. Put it over here and air the airbags up. So now that I have the airbags aired up to about 75 PSI, that's where I seem to like it. Now I'm going to back up and hook up to the RV. Now Michelle is actually still in there pulling the slides in and doing that type of thing and getting it all cleaned up. But that's while she's doing that. I still have the AC hook going. I still have the electrical hooked up back there um, because it's really hot. So I don't want to just disconnect it. I'd, I'd rather get all hooked up then I'll disconnect it. All right, here it comes guys. Got this big old 6.4 diesel F250 non four wheel drive, just two wheel only. And uh, we're ready to back up to the boat that's sitting over there. So here we go. Okay, so we backed up to the boat. Now we're gonna hook up the boat just like you would to a truck or anything like that. One side's working, the other side's not. Just what I thought. The tail lights work, but the right blinker don't work. But it is what it is at this point. So basically just double check everything. You really should have a, like a little thing in there that goes in there to lock in there, but I don't have one with me right now. All right, guys, we'll see how far we make it till we get pulled over. <laughs> 